Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're going to go over the supply side connection, also known as the line side tap. Let's get into it. So the supply side or line side uh, is in reference to what side of the service disconnecting means you're making your connection on. In this case, it is on the supply side or the utility side of the service disconnecting means, or basically line side versus load side, however you may want to think about it. Um, so first of all, why would we even want to do a supply side connection? Well, because there's very few rules to the supply side connection. It's a really easy go-to form when you have a large solar or storage system where you don't have to mess around with all the stringent requirements that are involved with connecting on the load side of the service equipment. Specifically like the 120% rule or the solar backfed breaker rule, which you can see in one of my previous videos. Basically, right, we are going to tap between the utility meter and the service disconnecting means. Right off the bat, 705.11a essentially is saying uh, the PV system that you're connecting cannot exceed the ampacity of the service conductors, right? So if you have a 200 amp service, then your PV system cannot exceed 200 amps. Next is 705.11b, right? This is basically saying that the wire between the tap and your overcurrent protection device has to be a minimum of six gauge. And it also has to be at least 125% of the max continuous output current of the solar and storage system you're connecting. So essentially your PV inverter or PV inverters, if you're using micro inverters, they all have a max continuous output current. You can normally find that on the nameplate label or on the data sheet. You multiply that times 1.25 to get 125% of the max continuous output current of your inverters. And the wires have to be sized at least to that rating. So 705.11C1 is in regards to the length between the tap and your overcurrent protection device. So if this is a dwelling where somebody resides like a home or an apartment, um, that overcurrent protection device has to be within 10 feet of the tap. If it is something other than a dwelling, such as a warehouse or something of that nature, then that, that overcurrent protection has to be 16.5 feet. Um, also, 705.11C1 is going over line versus load. Basically, uh, when the PV system disconnect is in the off position, if there are fuses that are inserted in that disconnect, they have to be de-energized so that they can easily be replaced. Um, and essentially in order to do that, you're gonna want the tap to be on the line side of the disconnect and the solar or storage system to be on the load side of the system disconnect. So if you get into a situation where you're doing a tap inside and maybe you need to put the PV system disconnect outside by the meter, and that exceeds the 10 or the 16.5 feet, what a lot of people will do is put two disconnects, one by the tap, either a main breaker enclosure or a fuse disconnect, um, and then from there add another non-fuse disconnect outside by the meter. A lot of utilities require that or maybe AHJs. So 230.82 is basically saying that PV system disconnect when used in a supply side connection needs to be suitable for use as service equipment. So to be clear, this is not defined as a service disconnect. It is a PV system disconnect. That being said, you essentially wire it up as a service disconnect. Um, and, and by doing so, you have a few different options here. Um, if you're tapping just a three wire feeder as shown here, maybe you're doing it outside by the meter and the main panels inside and all you have access to is that three wire feeder your L1, your L2, and your neutral. You're simply just gonna tap each one of those conductors, run it to the disconnect. You're gonna bond your ground and neutral in this disconnect and essentially create your equipment ground, which will run separated and unbonded through the rest of the system. Uh, next, if you do your tap, say inside of this panel, just on the line side of the service disconnect, 
uh, what you can do is you can run all four, L1, L2, neutral, and ground. You keep them all separated. As you know, there should only ever be one neutral to ground bond in a service, and that is at your service disconnecting means. So uh, in this situation, your grounds and your, your neutrals would be bonded in here, and then anything downstream would stay unbonded. So basically, if you're doing your supply side tap in your main service panel, you can run L1, L2, neutral, and ground, alter their respective locations inside of the main service panel, keep everything unbonded all the way through the disconnect. Just make sure to remove that green bonding screw out of the disconnect, the PV system disconnect, so that your neutral and ground stay unbonded. Now what you never wanna do, again, is have um, neutral current running on your equipment ground. Uh, that's what's called a objectionable current. And so that, that would happen if say you bonded uh, your ground and neutral in the disconnect and then continued to run all four to their, to their respective locations in the main service panel. And, and let's say um, during normal operation, you would have a parallel path for your ground and neutrals. And so you'd be sending neutral current back on your equipment grounding conductor, which you should never do. That can create a dangerous situation for an unassuming electrician. If you're getting value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe, press that notification bell, or leave a comment down in the description below. Let's get back into it. Next, we've got 230.46. Um, as of January 1st of 2023, now this is in the 2020 National Electric Code, they put this little stipulation in there that went live 2023, um, that your, your tap connectors here at the tap, whether that's gonna be a Polaris lug, that could be a distribution block, that could be a piercing tap connector, whatever it is, it has to state on the connector that it is suitable for use on the line side of the service equipment. Okay, so a lot of people are gonna say um, you can only tap a PV system to your feeder. And the reason being is uh, your PV system is just back feeding current to your service. It's either going to feed it out if you're in a net metering scenario or you're selling to the grid or it's going to feed it to your home loads through your service disconnect. That's why you can connect up to a 200 amp system to this, right? It's, it's, it's never going to overload the service. This service is still protected at 200 amps at its impacity by that overcurrent protection device. Whether it's pulling just from the grid or just from the PV or a mixture of the two, if you ever tried to pull more than 200 amps on this wire into your home, it would trip that disconnect, shutting the power off and keeping everything safe. Now, what happens if say you feed an energy storage system that then feeds downstream loads? Maybe let's call this your microgrid interconnect device, um, right? This could be like the IQ system controller or a backup interface or anything of that nature. Tesla gateway, right? Uh, and then that feeds an inverter. And then maybe it feeds a critical loads panel, 100 amp critical loads panel that then contains your backup loads. Well, the issue now is you've got a 200 amp service. The meter's rated for 200 amps. That wire's rated for 200 amps, um, but your service is no longer protected at its ampacity. You, in a hypothetical situation where you've overloaded your service with more than 200 amps worth of load, you could pull 200 amps in from the grid to your, your non-backed up loads and an additional 100 amps in from the grid to your backup loads. Essentially putting a 300 amp service on conductors only rated for 200 amps in that case, they could heat up, melt, start an electrical fire, um, and create a very dangerous situation. Um, now, there's nowhere in the code that I've been able to find that specifically states you are not allowed to do this, but there are gonna be some people in the industry that are gonna say, hey, you can't actually line side tap a, an energy storage system that feeds downstream loads. Um, if you ever get into that situation and you need to remediate it, one easy fix there is just to add a service disconnecting means upstream of the tap. That will then again, trip that breaker if you ever tried to pull more than 200 amps through the service. And that would essentially turn this from a line side tap 
to a load side tap. Well, everyone, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Till next time, take care.